coming up this week on the Course of Life podcast. Burns tames the snake pit. He is loving life at Innisbrook, a new champion crown at the Valspar, and a little drama to go with it. Plus, it's Dell Match Play Week. I was already at the course. I'm going to take you there with what I overheard on the first tee and some picks for the week and some thoughts heading into the weekend of a WGC. We're tuned into some randomness and some crazy storms coming through my way. And this week's guest is a friend of the show in May Brennan, the Holy Moly champion. I got to meet her in real life. And now we reconnect and have her back on the show to update on everything going on in her life. And we get to some March Madness talk. And we're talking my trip back to the factory and a creation from Mike when we always end with food. All of it brought to you by our friends at Desert Fox Golf, the makers of the phone caddy. You know we talk about it every single week because it's that great. I just played last weekend, and I put my phone in my phone caddy, and it's the talk of the foursome. No matter who you play with, people always ask you immediately, what is that? Where did you get that? And then I have to tell people how great the Desert Fox phone caddy is. But if you listen to this podcast, you already know. If you don't, be sure to enter the promo code COURSEOFLIFE at DesertFoxGolf.com. You can check out all their apparel and the phone caddies. They come in a wide variety of colors and lines and all sorts of designs. Again, check out Desert Fox Golf. Dot com promo code course of life to save ten percent off and enjoy your phone caddy today. Interwebs and welcome to Course of Life, part of the Morning Breed Podcast Network. We are proud to be presented by our friends at Desert Fox Golf, Tosi Snacks, Club Doctor Golf, and Volvic. I'm Michael, he's Alex. And Alex, it was the most colorful tournament in golf this week at Innisbrook for the Volspar Championship. And we have now a two time winner at the Volspar in Sam Burns, winning back to back. And by the way, Sam Burns has three wins over the last 12 months. Yeah. Um, one of the hottest golfers on tour right now and just cemented it with that amazing putt on the second playoff hole to win. Uh, what what good things can we say about Sam Burns this week? Yeah, I mean, it was just perseverance because, you know, think about, again, I'm really harping on it. I harped on it last week, but how tired these players are after the marathon that was the Players Week. You know, that dragging out into Monday night, that's not easy on the schedule for these guys, especially if they're churning it around and going and playing the next week. You've only got 48 hours to jump from one tournament to the next. You know, he wasn't great on Saturday. He could have easily just kind of packed it in and called himself tired, but he had a lot of fight there in the latter half of the weekend, and it showed. Got himself in position down the stretch and posted the number, got in front, got in the clubhouse, and then eventually won in a playoff. Gutsy stuff from a, from a guy that is really ascending fast. Like you said, hottest golfer on tour right now. Do I want to maybe give him the crown of hottest golfer in the world at this very moment? Sure, I'll give it to him for one week. How about that? Because right now he's lighting up. <laughs> okay, so he's the hottest golfer. We're going to give it to him for one week. He's already said he's not going to play in the match play this week yes, because he yes, realizes yes. he needs a week off because he's got to be rested for Augusta. So let's ask the question I ask every week with every winner because I think it's becoming my thing, over under on uh, one major for Sam Burns this year. I don't know. Is he is he a major championship kind of guy? He hasn't quite shown that yet. That That's the thing we haven't seen is consistency in the majors from him. Uh, but he's going to get a full calendar to show us what he's really built for uh, when it comes to major championship golf in 2022. I'm going under on that because uh, jury's still out. But, but I will say he's as hot as anyone right now. And that third win, uh, very impressive. The, the type of win he had on Sunday was the kind of win that a guy who already has 10 or 15 wins under their belt would notch. Uh, so a very mature W from Sam Burns at the Dallas Bar. That's right. And, and someone whose name we've been hearing a lot on Sundays, kind of in that top five over and over and over again, a, a past major winner is Justin Thomas. And he was uh, prominently featured again over this weekend. But the real reason I want to talk about him was his horrendous choice of pant on Saturday. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you <laughs> notified me of this briefly. I saw something on Twitter about this. You seemed a little bit offended with, with the joggers he was rocking. 
Uh, yeah, myself and uh, and friend of the podcast, Jeremy Schilling, uh, both <laughs> lamented at this horrific choice of pant. Um, just not not a good look. It's not a good look, I think, for anyone. I'm just not a fan of joggers in general. But on the golf course, no less, uh, this was this was not a, a good look. So th- so again, let's not confuse this because you know when the hoodie debate comes up, you're like you're cool with the well, hoodie. So like so well, this isn't okay. really so, even a this is more of a just a fashion choice that you are not liking. This is not a wear whatever you want on the course deal. You you are just you're not with the fashion with JT's I, I have No problem with him deciding to wear these horribly <laughs> ugly pants if that's what he wants to wear. Right. I don't have a problem with with them being worn on the course. The problem is just that they are fashionably horrible. <laughs> okay, I have some good news. I just sent you the the photo in the video before we hopped on. I was just yes. at the course today for the Dell match play. He's he's off the joggers. Okay, so he's Fantastic. back to normal pants. So all is restored in the world. Um, I'll relay the message if I see anything later this week. If I see any joggers reemerge, uh, I'll be sure to let him know how offended you are because I'm, I'm sure he values your opinion greatly. I, I I can't wait. I appreciate it. Please please let him know and let me let me let me tell me what he says after the fact as well, so I can know how important my advice is to him. Well done. Um, (laughs) Let's talk about something else. Uh, On last week's podcast, we said how excited we were for the Saudi Golf League announcement for all their events that they were going to be coming out. And when we recorded last week's episode, uh, there was no announcement. And since then, as usual, right after we record and the episode comes out, Greg Norman says, hey, guys, here's my announcement. And uh, out comes the new LIV golf invitational series that is the new name for this they have picked all except one course that they will play in they're going to be in london they're going to be in new jersey they're going to be in boston bangkok Jeddah, and then somewhere in october for the team championship and uh, there's going to be a whole money here 250 million dollar total prize purse among these eight 54 hole no cut tournaments that are beginning in june uh other than maybe phil mickelson playing in these who else do you think is going to be out here for this yes name name one player who's committed please go ahead go ahead and Uh, tell me the list of people who committed I mean, I think that if Phil hadn't really screwed the pooch, he would have already committed to this. I still think he's going to play in some of these. Um, but other than that, I really don't know who's going to be playing in these. Uh, that's the, where I'm at with this thing is while I am a, a proponent of the gossip and I will proliferate the gossip here on the podcast, I'm also at the point where I need Greg Norman to name one name. Just just give me give me one hard tweet and say this guy has signed on the dotted line and he's in. I've still yet to hear that. We've heard the rumblings about Jason Kokrak, who's got the Saudi tour logo in his bag. Uh, maybe I posed that question to him this week at Austin Country Club. I'm sure some drunk fan will at one point this week. Uh, but regardless, I, you know, a, a lot of air being thrown around. This is kind of like I'm comparing this to the fire festival right now. And this is kind of like when people were thinking the festival might not be a real thing. And they're saying, no, 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 look, it's real. Look, here's all the stuff that you're going to be getting. And yeah, no, here's all these promises. Nope, everything's real. It's fine. We're the, you know, this is the, uh, the it's fine emoji where the entire room is on fire and you're, and you're fine because you're not on fire yet. I think we're at that stage right now. Uh, I do want to get your thoughts on just the venues, though, because I noticed this Boston venue, the International. They're they're trying to play mm-hmm. a course outside Boston that I've actually played in my lifetime. Um, very interesting that we see some Trump venues as well, too, on on this list of tournaments. Not surprised there, uh, but overall, uh, just left with more confusion. Name one name, Greg Norman. Name one name. Yeah, you know, you're you're taking a very uh, the crucible uh, approach here, where you you need names mentioned before you can take anything seriously. Pretty uh, much, yeah. You, you, that's really what you're doing here. Also, can I can I just say, just pointing out here, and I saw this on Twitter, I think it was some of the courses that we're naming here, like the International in Boston, quote unquote. Uh, Centurion Golf Club in London, quote unquote. Yes. Some of these places are well outside of the city centers that we are saying they are a part of. <laughs> you know what this is? This is harping back to the uh, the Trump book we read by Rick Riley. This mm. is uh, Trump DC that's located in Virginia, fifty miles outside the city. That, that's what's going on here. We're, we're doing I mean, we're doing a little bit of that right now. <laughs> the International is outside of four ninety five. But if you yeah. know Boston, you know anything outside of four ninety five is not Boston. <laughs> We're talking so, solid 50 to 60 minutes uh, on your phone, on Apple Maps right now. Okay, yes, this is yes. not Boston. All right, it's yeah, closer so. to Worcester than it is to Boston. <laughs> so. Thank you for that 
clarification. So yeah, some sketchiness emerged. I am intrigued by the fact that they throw the announcement out. So listen, they've got these events starting in June, Mike. All right, I'm checking my watch. It's late March right now. <laughs> so, so, so we're going to have to get some names on board real quick. Uh, maybe before even the Masters, you would think. Uh, but the jury's still out on on what exactly is to come of this alternate league. Yeah, I'm also curious to see where any of this will be televised because, of course, the TV rights are where the money's going to come from. $250 million is a lot for some of these people to put up, but it's with the expectation that they're going to get TV rights and they're going to get the money back for this. Yeah, so. ready? ready? Here's my here's my pitch. Uh, mm. Fox News, uh, Fox Business. Uh, okay. What else? We're gonna... <laughs> <laughs> I can just see the TV deal being written right now with Greg Norman and, and the Fox News executives. Well, you know, all, all I need to say is if it goes to Fox, we don't need to worry about hearing Joe Buck call golf anymore. So um, that's right. Yes, that, there well, is well, that. Well played. We'll be tuned. We'll be tuned in for future announcements. Uh, let's talk about uh, the ladies uh, out there in the world of golf because uh, over on the Let Tour, that's the ladies oh, yeah. European the tour. Love we it. don't yeah. talk about the Let Tour very often. That's right. Because on Sunday, w- once again, they just go to show you why why we should be watching a lot more women's golf than, than everybody is, is that there were eight straight birdies in a row recorded by American Kelly Whaley on her uh, way to hit a course record 63 at the Ramco Saudi Ladies Jesus. International. Wow. So I mean, eight, eight, eight straight birdies. birdies. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think the PGA Tour record is either it's either eight or nine, I believe. Um, just could never even imagine finding that level of, level of heat on the golf course. And here it is again. This is borderline a weekly se- uh, segment of just absurd stats in women's golf and now you're you're jumping across the pond here so mm-hmm. it appears that mike um there's there's women golfers all around the world that are actually good and, and this is not just a, a localized thing in any specific country uh, so shout out to the let tour for for putting another crazy stat on the board that's right and uh that event ended up being won by your england's uh georgia hall yes so that's right. right there uh, you go cupper in the past she's, she's a known right. commodity and uh, and so next weekend, also, the LPGA returns to the States after taking a week off from being in uh, out there in Asia. So we'll have the LPGA back stateside as well. So we'll have daytime golf going up against each other with everything going on. Um, Good stuff. Before we talk a little bit about the match play and Austin, Texas, and what you're going to see while you're there, let's talk about our own personal golf rounds this past week uh, in which uh, I got zero birdies. I got a couple. I think I got at least eight bogeys in a row. So I think I have that going for me. Um, and uh, Alex, you, you get to say that uh, uh, you, you beat me in a in a D three match in our dollar 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 match we played this I week. Did. So uh, I am no longer undefeated, and you now have a W to. Uh, yeah, to, it to wasn't really even my best spot stuff, but you know, it's all about you know the holes and the hole by hole match. And if you're making pars at the right time uh, when, when you're stumbling, then that's exactly what I need to do to get the W. Listen up. I'm not here to like break down the if ands or buts or the pitchers on the scorecard. If I'm getting W's against you on the D3 app, that's all I care about. Uh, we'll definitely have to settle the score with the rubber match pretty soon. Uh, but yeah, the golf game has been pretty good the last couple of weeks. This past weekend, I had a fun little birdie on a par five and broke 80 again. So uh, overall, it's been fun. I enjoy just having the, just a little bit of the wager, you know, for those out there. Who don't necessarily want to be splurging or betting too much money, but they want to have just a little bit of spice on their next round. Check out the D3 app because that's what we're using right now to score these matches. Compares handicaps, compares courses all around the world, and you can do play a match remote as well, which is exactly where we're doing. So uh, uh, hopefully that rubber match will come up sooner rather than later. All right, let's talk about uh, this next week because it is one of the most fun weeks in golf. It is the match play, the WGC Dell match play in Austin, Texas. Uh, And as they've been doing now for a couple of years, we're going to get a couple days of uh, not match play and then they'll make the bracket. Um, So you're going to be there on the course. You're marshalling once again, correct, out there for the week? Correct. I, 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 so I was marshalling. Um, I'm actually going to be doing some volunteer time in the media center as well, too. So there wasn't too much going on today because of the inclement weather. Uh, but I'm going to see a lot more action from the press conferences later in the week as well, too. Um, but it was just great to be out there and just, it's good to kind of get that full grandstand feeling back to last year, the tournament existed, but with a very limited crowd and kind of limited infrastructure this year, it is fully 100% back. So I, I can't wait. 
Yeah, this is uh, going to be exciting. Big names out there, as you would expect. Um, Bryson DeChambeau is finally hitting the course once again, probably getting his last tune-up in before the Masters. Uh, did you see him out there? How did he look today Was he, as he was practicing? I did. I said hi to him. I saw him walking from the range to the putting green. And then the funny thing I was watching for is I was looking at the wrist because this is what he's coming back from. He had the mysterious wrist, wrist injury in Saudi Arabia in January, and he hasn't been back since. One thing I noticed, and you'll see the video I posted on Twitter at Course of Life One and on my Instagram as well at Course of Life Alex, is he was using a very cuppy motion for his chip shots, almost as if he was trying to protect against a risk that may not be a hundred percent. So something to watch this week if he gets himself in a lot of spots around the green and how he deals with that. He was kind of playing around with a few different wedges at a few different kind of delivery points for his chip shots. So so a note to take there and see how that, that looks heading into the master season as well. And uh, other big names out there as well included uh, Jordan Spieth. You, you seem to say that he looked a little svelte, a little slim out there. I think so, right? I don't know. Had you noticed this recently in the last several months when I saw him for the first time in person today? I, he did look a little slimmer. Uh, for better or for worse, I don't really know, but he, he was in great spirits, signed my master's flag as well. I told him, I'm, I'm going to be there, Mike. I'm going to, I told him, I'm going to be there. I'm, I'm heading to the master's. I'm going to the Tuesday practice round. And he turned to me and said, that's the best day of the week to be there. You get to see everyone play and the champions dinners at night. I was like, well, Jordan, I'm, I'm not going to the champions dinner. You are. So, so have a good time with that and enjoy whatever Hideki serves up. Uh, but it was good to see Spieth out there in good spirits. Right. Uh, other big names out there, Patrick Cantley and uh, Ian Poulter. What do you, what do you think is going to be happening here with these two? Uh, not a lot of words when they go head to head. <laughs> That's going to be a fun little Ryder Cup rivalry renewed. I overheard a caddy, uh, Taylor Gooch and Tony Finau were teeing off in the first tee. And one of the caddies came over and said, all right, let's place bets. I got the over under at 20 words between Ian Poulter and Patrick Cantley for their entire match. Uh, there's definitely some bad blood there. Uh, so that highlights uh, some of the first round matches that you'll see Wednesday through Friday. Uh, the real betting angle, if you want to get into picks, though, can't really happen until Friday evening. With the way the format works, Mike, it's kind of the World Cup grouping format Wednesday through Friday. And then Friday night, we get to the meat of it all, and we pick the 16 winners from each mini bracket. Then at that point, it's single elimination. I think the real play when you're betting the match play is you want to watch intently Wednesday through Friday, see who you like, see who's got good form on the course, and play some bets Friday night to see who might lift the trophy on Sunday. That's right. And uh, we'll have some brackets. We'll put our brackets out because it's it's that time of year. It's, yeah, uh, I mean, this this yeah. bracket, every year I joke, like, this is the hardest bracket in the world. Like, if, if you think the March bra Madness bracket is, is hard, this is, like, at least 100 to 1,000 times harder because the difference between number one and 64 in the golf world is extremely slim to none at certain points or any, any moment for any day, for any match. Uh, so unpredictable, to say the least. Uh, but I can't wait for all the coverage. Again, follow uh, at Cor COL Podcast and Course of Life Alex on Insta. And I'm at Course of Life One on Twitter. I'll be at the course all weekend. Also, this weekend is the Corellis Putacanya Championship. Um, and uh, that, that's always a fun event that none of us pay attention to because it's the Dell match play. Let's be honest. I, yeah, it's tough for me. Beautiful course. And of course, that we're going to talk a little bit about in this week's interview as well, too. But uh, it obviously does play second fiddle cause, since I'm literally at the match play all week. It's hard for me to pay attention. Uh, but again, this is one of those unique opportunities that we like to talk about for those second tier PGA Tour players that can't qualify for Dell. You know, they need this opportunity for FedEx Cup points and uh, to get their name up on that list for better status. So I'll, I'll definitely be watching out of the corner of my eye. I know Dylan Wu's in the field. I think Nate Lashley is in the field as well, too. A couple of past podcast guests uh, will be playing in paradise at Punakana. Let's switch over to Tuned In, where we share what we're tuning into outside of the world of sports. You know, this week, uh, it's been turning back to the Nintendo Switch because they finally are... While they're not giving us a brand new Mario Kart game, Alex, they are okay. releasing brand new courses and tracks oh. for Mario Kart. Nice. And over the course of the next year, they're going to release, really, they're going to double the number of tracks that are already out there for Mario Kart 8. So they released eight new tracks already, and uh, they'll be putting more out over the next year. 
And uh, that means it's time to get back into racing. So that's that's what we've been doing. And, well, that's um, that's great. I mean, if if you if they're not going to come out with an entirely new game, that's the move. It's, it's just expand on, on what we all already have and make it better for us. And yeah, more courses. I mean, listen, in Mario Kart, if you're adding courses, that's basically you're you're you're, you're doubling the past capacity of the game. So d- yes. double the pleasure, yes. double the fun. In my opinion, that's a great move. I mean, I, I don't really need a new game uh, if you're giving me new tracks, but I will say <laughs> it has been like three, four years since they put out a new game. Mario Kart 8, I think it's even longer than that because Mario Kart 8 was what we had on, on, the, on the Nintendo Wii as well. It was the same game. They just ported it over to the Switch. So You know what? Th- this is a move like for people in our age range, like in yes. our exact age range. Yes. We're at the point where it's like, ah, you know, I still got like these fond memories of like five or six video games I really love. I'm not video game shopping anymore, but boy, if you could add to fill in the blank, mm-hmm. you know, that would be mm-hmm. great. I think they're really appeasing to our, our, our crowd with this move. So shout out to Mario Kart for the, uh, the emphasis on new courses. All right, my tuned in this week uh, was weather related. Something that I can honestly say has only happened a couple times since I moved to Texas in the last 12 years. The uh, the match play guys, I, I heard a couple of uh, players joking at the course today, Mike, uh, when they got their rental cars, that they were instructed to park their rental cars <laughs> under and covered because there were hail chances on tornado warnings. And we had twisters flying through central Texas. So uh, the weather radar and the weather meteorologists were going absolutely nuts. Uh, visions of uh, Helen Hunt in the movie Twister were reenacted into real life. Doesn't look like anything too serious happened, fortunately, uh, but there were some spinners here in central Texas. So uh, it was a wild uh, Monday, to say the least, in Austin. Yeah, that, that's one piece of weather that I am uh, not a fan of since moving outside of New England. You know, you didn't need to worry about tornadoes or hurricanes or anything like that yeah. when you were in the Northeast. Um the only thing you had to worry about was snow, and you usually knew it was coming in a snowstorm. But uh, right. not a lot of warning yeah. on a tornado. You know, no. for those who don't know, and and also it's really great when it when it drops in a city at five forty five on a Monday. You know, no nobody's on the roads then, right? That's, no, it's, no, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> so uh, unfortunately, some real catastrophe was avoided, but definitely a exciting weather event to say the least here in Central Texas. That's that's what I was tuned into. All right, let's uh, get into this week's guest. Alex, you uh, met a past guest, one of our favorite guests uh, at the uh, PGA show. That's Holy Moly champion May Brennan, and uh, you, you got her to come back on the podcast. That's right. She's got all the gossip and a lot of updates from a friend of the show. And it's been, can you believe it's been almost two years since we had May on? And she had that unbelievable hole in one. Uh, en route to her victory in Holy Moly Season 2. It was great to reconnect with her. Uh, we catch up on everything that she's doing, uh, what she puts into her golf content, and some really interesting trips she went on as well. We'll get into all of that with May Brennan in just a second. But first, uh, let's talk about our favorite golf ball out there on the course. I'm assuming, Alex, it's what you played again this week that got you under 80, and that would be the Volvic. Yeah, it's the XT Soft or the Vivid. You can take your pick. These are two new great balls on the market that we fully endorse, A, because we like the look of them, and B, because we like the performance. So if if you are getting on board with a golf ball for those two reasons and those two reasons as primary reasons, then Volvic golf balls are, are definitely for you. Yeah, it's a ball that I know that when I'm hitting the ball well, which on the front nine of my round, I felt like I was, yes. it does exactly what I expect it to do, um, which is uh, go straight and uh, land softly on the greens and, and give me a, a good short game, which when I know I'm hitting it well, I know it's going to do the right thing. When I'm not hitting it well, then who knows? But that's my problem, not the ball's problem. It is, uh, yes. <laughs> but the nice thing is I always know it's going to be in a bright color. The uh, XT Soft, it comes in white and yellow, and the Vivid now comes in a multi-pack of colors, so you can get all the colors in the rainbow in one box. They offer uh, some really amazing performance because Volvo puts their marketing money and puts it back into their ball instead of into these big tour players. So head on over to Volvic's website. It's volvik.com and check it all out for yourself. Performance in color. That's Volvic. They have a ball for every swing. Volvic.com.
Next up on the tee, we have a past guest who I got to connect with in person at the PGA show. She's taken her holy moly fame to totally new levels now. It's May Brennan back on the course of life. May, how are you today? Hey, Alex. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah, I can't believe it's been over a year and a half since we last had you on the show. Um, you're in a beautiful part of the country, for people who don't know, in that bottom left corner of Utah. It's an unbelievable spot. You helped hook my wife up with some great recommendations for her girls' trip. Uh, but how's everything out there in Utah these days? Um, it's pretty good. Um, I'm actually in northern Utah right now, so Salt Lake City. Okay, um, cool. So it's kind of sad. So in southern Utah, it's so nice and warm out there, um, but it's a little bit cold over here. <laughs> yeah, you guys are still going through the winter for sure, even in March. Um, it was neat to connect with you uh, when we did meet at the PGA show. I was just saying before we hopped on, it had to have been a little bit surreal for you um, because you've definitely kind of shot to new levels of fame uh, with your following in the last two years, kind of since the world got shifted upside down and everything with COVID. But what was it like to like get back out there and interact with everyone in real life at the PGA show? It was awesome. Like just meeting like a bunch of different people that like followers and also just some of the girls that I've connected throughout just social media, um, meeting them in person for the first time. Like, it was awesome. It was kind of weird for a sec, you know, like I wasn't used to it. Um, but it was a blast. Yeah, I saw you got to spend some time at Top Golf. And were, were you there? Did you get to connect with John Daly? I know he was all over the PGA show week, but I didn't get to see him. Um, yeah, so I got invited to like, his one of his VIP parties or whatever. Um, and it was really cool. I was kind of fangirling um, and trying to like, I just got a selfie with him, which was awesome. But I was taking secret photos of him while like he was in the back. <laughs> Kind of thing, but. I'd be doing the same thing too. I'm kind of fascinated with actually like how good he is musically. Like you give him a guitar and a mic, he's, he's pretty talented. Yeah, he was. I had no idea. And yeah, he was just on the stage and he sang a few songs. Um, it was pretty cool. I'm, I'm curious when you're at the PGA show and seeing, you know, friends through our networks and followers as well, too. Um, what are some of the like funnier or notable interactions you just had with followers or fans recently when you run into them? Um, there was so I was at the airport um, and I had no makeup on, you know. <laughs> um, and then I quickly like went to the bathroom to get ready, like, you know, get put makeup on and everything. And then right as I came out, that's when a follower recognized me. And I was like, thank God they didn't see me, you know, 10 minutes ago, because they probably Perfect. wouldn't recognize me, honestly. <laughs> Perfect timing. Nice, nice work there. Um, covering up indeed. I love that. Um, so again, we're, we're here with May Brennan, past guest and a holy moly royalty. Like I mentioned, you've done a lot of really cool travel recently, though, that I wanted to catch up with you about. Uh, first things first, we have to talk about a couple things that I saw from your travels to Arizona. I saw you got to go to the waste management. Was that was that your first time there? Or had you been to the tournament before? No, this is my very first time. And it was it was crazy. I didn't like everybody tells you that the waste management something like is just completely different than other golf tournaments. Um, and it really was. It's it's wild. Uh, how much time did you get to spend on 16 specifically? It's one of those holes where like, you know, you could like spend the entire day like not at hole, at hole 16. But then once you eventually get into 16, it's quite the party. Did you, you spend all your time there? Or were you all around the course? I was all around the course. Um, I didn't go to 16, actually. I guess like I didn't want like the huge crowds in the 16. Like it's just super crazy. Um, and I was kind of scared of that a little bit. <laughs> it, it's literally a stadium full of golf fans for people who yeah. haven't been. Uh, it's quite the party on, on Saturday as well, too. But it looked like you had some fun. And one other cool thing I saw that you got to do in Arizona, which is very unique. You were at a neat networking event, but I saw that you got to get a putting lesson from Masters champion Mike Weir. Tell me how that came about. Oh, yeah. Um, that, was, that wasn't at the same trip. Um, I was just there for an event with mm -hmm. For All which is like a community of women just wanting to learn how to golf and like growing the game, um, you know, in the women's community. Um, and Michelle Money, that's Mike Ware's um, girlfriend, and she was kind of hosting the event. So he was there giving us all like putting lessons. Um, and again, I was fangirling there as well. 
I mean, that's the guy you need to listen to. He made some of like the most clutch putts ever to win his green jacket. Um, mm-hmm. Was there anything like notable that you actually took away for, from a lesson like that? I know it's tricky, like when you have a pro on the spot and they're they're trying to teach you how to be a world class putter, but it's not easy to, to to teach everybody. But anything special you took away from the lesson? Yeah, um, I think most of it was mo- like beginner things, you know. Um, but the thing that he focused most on was like the mental game of putting um and that's something that I've never really like thought of as much um but yeah he really focused on that with which was really cool nice love it um one thing I want to compliment you on is you've definitely done an amazing job on social media I know you do a lot of it professionally and you have been for a while but I'm curious since the last time we talked you've really done a great job growing your following in the golf community what's been the key for you in terms of content like what have you noticed has really resonated with what with what you posted in the last year or two on Instagram specifically um yeah I think it really is consistency um, and knowing your niche, your audience, um, and connecting with your followers as well. Um, I actually just recently, I'm doing this full time now. Um, I quit my job and wanted to congrats hundred percent on Instagram. Yeah. Um, and it's been awesome, but I really think just that consistency and staying on brand, um, is, you know, the key. Love it. Um, one thing that I took notice of, which is really cool, is you got to go on an amazing trip uh, to a, what basically looked like paradise uh, through what was called the Embassy Social Network. I'm really curious how the opportunity came about for you to go on this trip and exactly what Embassy Social does for people like yourself. Yeah. Um, let's see. So this one of the golfer girls, golfer influencers, um, Courtney Ann, mm-hmm. um, she was going on this trip. And she calls me and she's like, hey, like, do you want to go to the Dominican in three days for a whole week, you know? Um, And it worked out with my schedule and everything. And I was like, why not? Um, I went over there, you know, not knowing anybody. I had only met Courtney one other time. Um, And it was awesome. Like all the influencers that were there, um, all the guys were on The Bachelor. um, And, you know, for a second, I was like, why am I even here? Like, I don't fit in with these people, you know? Um, But they were all super nice um, and really just, you know, taking pictures, content, um, and getting to know each other. Um, And the person that, or the company that hosted us was Embassy Social. And it's really just like an influencer platform where brands can reach out to influencers. um, And it's all just kind of like a central location. And it's an app and it just makes, you know, content creators lives just a little bit easier. Very cool. We'll, we'll get to the content that came from it. I got some questions for sure, but I want to ask quickly about the golf there. Cause I saw it was right on a course where you were staying. I believe it was the course where I think they played a PGA tour event, a Corrales there. Um, how much golf did you actually get to play on the trip? Um, we really didn't that much. Um, which is sad just because like there weren't that many like golf content creators. So there I was more- going to ask who is the best golfer on the trip, but I think I know the answer. <laughs> um, so they weren't like too interested in the golfing, but you know, we got to putt a little bit and chip around. Um, so that was cool, but really like the course was closed at one point and we were just on hole number 18 um, looking at like the sunset and the ocean and everything. And I was like tearing up cause it was just so beautiful. And I was like, I was just so grateful to be there. Um, and it was, it was just so much fun. That is like a bucket list trip and location. It looked absolutely uh, beautiful. Um, I'm curious, what, what do the other uh, influencers there think about you when they kind of, you know, got to meet you and, and see and understand your content and kind of the world they come from? What, what were their kind of impressions of you and, and golf content you create? Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I think like most people, they don't realize that um, like golf influencing is a thing. Um, you know, there's more of like that lifestyle, um, influencer is kind of what they were. Um, right. Been on the show of some sorts or T yeah. TV, yeah. you know, music, exactly. whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's kind of what they were focused on. Um, but for me, it was just cool to see them all like making TikToks and just, um, photos and everything. Cause sometimes you feel awkward 
taking those videos where people are watching um, and they weren't at all. Um, so they kind of helped me with my confidence in that department. Right. Yeah. You were, you were with your people there. So it felt, <laughs> felt totally normal. I love that. All right. So now, now is my opportunity to fanboy. It, do, it doesn't sound like you'd watch much of the bachelor or bachelorette, but I certainly have. I'm, I'm a certified member of bachelor nation. So when I saw who you were with on the trip, I immediately became intrigued. So have you seen any of the show at all? Any seasons of bachelor or bachelorette where, you know, Aaron and Andrew and them were on at all? Um, no. So I watched like Jojo season and that was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, and I get like snippets every once in a while. Um, but not really. And then I was actually super excited to watch their season. Um, when I got home from the trip, you know, now that I like know them and everything. Right. Um, and I couldn't find it. It wasn't on Hulu or anything. So I was really sad about it. Oh yeah, okay. I'll I'll locate the episodes for you. It's definitely a great, a great season indeed. So let let's get to the guys. Um, how many cameos a day was Aaron doing? I, I saw you caught him in action doing his video tributes <laughs> to fans. Uh, is it really like as many as I think it is? Was he just doing them all day? It was a lot. Yeah, I was impressed, <laughs> and he was just he's a natural. Like he was so good at it. Like for me, when I do cameos, it's like my tenth try, tenth take. Um, but for him, it's like just one and done. And it's like really good. <laughs> nice. It was Aaron Clancy uh, for the Bash fans who know and Andrew Spencer. I saw Clay Harbour is there as well, former NFL player. Um, wh- which uh, I'm curious, which guy uh, from The Bachelor kind of surprised you the most in terms of personality? Um, let's see. Uh, I don't know. They were all very much like they were just really all chill um I think for once I kind of knew who they were I was kind of nervous you know how I was like I wonder if they'll be stuck up like and all of that and they really weren't like I think that's what surprised me they were all just very very nice and just kind-hearted people very cool. It looked like a lot of fun, a lot of pool parties to be had. I, I got to ask um, whether it was you or maybe someone else. So between all the influencers in the house, there had to have been uh, some crazy nights. Were there any sort of uh, any love connections or any exciting drama to report from the trip or was it all on the up and up? Um, that's what I thought. Like, I thought there was going to be drama and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm picturing an episode of Bachelor in Paradise for those fans out there who know, but I'm sure it was probably a little more tame than that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wanted to see firsthand, you know, like the crazy drama. Um, but no, it was pretty relaxed. Um, and it was just, we all just became friends after the trip, which is really fun. What, would, here's a random question. Would you ever consider going on a show like Bachelor or Bachelorette? I don't think so. Um, I got to hear, you know, like being on the show, there's so many contracts, it sounds like. Um, mm, yeah. it's like they can and can't do and everything. Um, so I don't think I would want to, you know, be held down like that. <laughs> you know what? And they have to be like, if you, unless you win, you have to be like sworn to secrecy for several months before the show actually airs. I don't know how I could do that and, and prevent all that information from my friends and family. I, I would die trying to keep that inside. So that's probably another contract as well. Yeah, I agree. Like when I won or when I was a finalist on Holy Moly, I had to keep that a secret um, to, you know, friends and family. And it was it was hard enough for me there. So I couldn't even imagine being on The Bachelor. (laughs) There's an there's an easier question for you. If Holy Moly asked you to come back on for the Tournament of Champions, would you do that show? 100%. (laughs) One hundred percent. Yeah, I thought so. Again, we're we're connecting with May Brennan, past guest here on the Course of Life. It's great to have you back on. I'm curious. You're you're always traveling somewhere. You're doing all sorts of great content uh, across the country and the world. Uh, what's what's next? What are the plans for you? Do you have any golf or content trips planned in the next few months? Um, I'm going to Augusta National come April, not for the nice. Masters, um, but for. Uh, the Augusta Women's Amateur Open. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So, and I think a lot of the influencer girls are going to be there as well. Um, So yeah, I'm excited for that. Nice. I actually just found out I'm going to get to go to the Tuesday practice round at Augusta. It's the first time I've ever been to the Masters in my life and wait my whole life to do it. So I finally get to check it off the bucket list. That's awesome. Yeah, I've been been waiting for it for a while, but uh, it'll be really cool to see the ANWA kick things off. It's awesome watching the ladies dominate the course as well, too. Um, All right, let's play a few minutes 
of uh, ask an influencer here with May Brennan before we wrap up on the course of life. Um, I'm curious, uh, what is uh, going on with Reels? I am in the Stone Age, and I learn a lot slower on Instagram, and maybe the average person out there uh, agrees with me. I'm good at posting. I've just gotten used to stories, but I see you do really good with Reels. Uh, are they extremely difficult, or am I making this out to be more than it is, and they're, they're a really easy thing that I just haven't adapted to yet? Um, uh, lately I have been growing my following with my reels. Um, there was a period where in a matter of like two weeks, I gained about 30,000 followers. Wow. Um, yeah. And it really is all reels. You know, that's what Instagram's kind of favoring at the moment. Um, and it really is like a numbers game. Some just pop off and some don't, um, making sure that you're using like trendy music. The sound really does matter. Um, and making sure that like you modify a trend that you see to your niche though, um, is important. Um, but it's so much fun. I love it. And, you know, I, I want to get more creative with my videos as well. Um, so I've got some, a few ideas that I'm hoping to start doing as soon as there's no snow on the ground. Mm, Okay. Yeah. You're going to need some nice weather. It sounds like, yeah. Yeah. Cool. And then I'm curious, um, what's the, uh, it could be any direction. We don't have to be too creepy, but what's the craziest maybe DM that you've received recently? Could be from anybody. Um, <laughs> um, I have a quite a bit of people asking if they can have my socks. Um, and oh, wow. Like, you could probably make a lot of money on that, I imagine. <laughs> they don't specify if they want like a new pair, a dirty pair. Um, <laughs> but it's weird. Like I never got that request ever. And then all of a sudden, it's been quite a few recently. I think you just have to go to Target and just buy some dollar socks and then mm-hmm. just take them out of the wrapper and just send them. And you don't even have to wear them. You can just you can just make free money. It sounds like that's what they're inviting you to do. <laughs> nice, awesome. Well, May, thank you so much for connecting. It's great to have you on the course of life. As always, uh, let's finish with our nineteenth hole question, brought to you by Lynx Drinks. Um, you played a lot of cool golf courses. You've been to a lot of cool places. Uh, what's just like the neatest spot you've been out? Whether it's a bar or a clubhouse or a golf course or a restaurant, uh, what's a cool place you've been out to recently? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. That's kind of a broad question. Um, like a cool golf course I've been to or just anywhere in general? Yeah. What's the coolest course you played recently? I know it's tricky weather right now where you are, but had to have been in Arizona, I imagine, right? Um, no, well, I went to Hawaii recently. Um, oh, nice. How was that? It was a blast. Um, and I went and saw my friends there and stuff, but I can't remember the golf course only because it has, you know, a kind of a funky name. Um, but That's that was okay. awesome. You don't Just have to, it's you so don't have to butcher the pronunciation. Yeah. It's very, very different out there. Indeed. It, it, I feel like the Hawaii golf courses, the way people describe it to me, it's like playing on like the set of the movie Jurassic Park or something like that. Yeah. It looks like mm-hmm. you're out in the middle of nature. Yeah, for sure. Like, and it's so humid and that's something I'm not used to at all. So like I had to change my golf glove a few times during the round. Cause like my hands are just so sweaty. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't even think about that. That's funny. Okay. Watch out for the humidity. If you ever visit uh, yes. Hawaii out there. Cool. May, thank you so much for being on the podcast again. Uh, looking forward to following all the content uh, that you produce on Instagram and everywhere else. And now uh, we'll catch up down the road. Okay. Perfect. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for having me. That interview with May Brennan is brought to you by Club Doctor Golf, the number one golf club care solution. They've got two great products to keep your clubs squeaky clean. The club cleaning solution clips right on your golf bag to make it easy to clean your clubs on the course. And then they've also got their iron polishing solution, which restores that original shine for a more thorough clean of the dirt, grass, and grime that sticks to your clubs. Clean clubs improve club performance, ball spin, ball speed, and control, and just give you a little bit better attitude toward each shot. 
So bring your clubs back to life and restore your club's original shine with Club Doctor. Either the cleaning solution or the polish is the quick and portable solution you need on the course. So head on over to clubdoctorgolf.com. Use our promo code COL for 15% off any purchase. They're Amazon's choice for golf club polish. And when you use our promo code COL on their website, clubdoctorgolf.com, you'll save 15% off your purchase. So Club Doctor Golf, the number one golf club care solution, clubdoctorgolf.com. And we're back. Great chat there with May. Um, Alex, I hope that she's going to give you a cut of that sock idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you you like that empire. That's a million dollar idea. You know, it, it really is. I mean, that's <laughs> not what I would expect would be the weirdest thing in her DMs <laughs> at all. <laughs> there probably is weirder, uh, but that definitely tops the creep list. Uh, but yeah, she's definitely sitting on a small fortune uh, if she does enact that, uh, that customer fan base. Uh, but it was funny to catch up with May, and uh, it's really cool to see how much her following has grown over the years and uh, how real she's kept it with us. So appreciate her being a friend of the show and definitely follow May for uh, some more really cool golf content as well. And if you like that interview, plus everything else we do here on the podcast, go ahead and give us a rating, a thumbs up, punch that subscribe button on the podcast app that you're using to let us know we're doing a great job. If you hate everything we're doing here, but you're still listening to us, then uh, you might as well hit subscribe anyway, because then you can rage on us every week when you listen to us. I'm okay with you hating us. There's a very good chance that there's a lot of people listening right now that are that are really just here for May and, and not for us at all. So if they made it this far holy crap thank you so much for giving us a chance hit the subscribe and we won't let you down next week let's uh talk a little football before we get into the madness let us march um march started with madness when tom brady decided he was coming out of retirement (laughs) yep 40 days Um, long yep 40 days long um shorter than most hollywood marriages yep um and 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 I think we're still reeling from it, aren't we? Yeah, and of course he had to throw another carrot out there this week to just further enrage um, the little Patriots fans at this point. He's still our God, eternally thankful for everything and all the happiness he gave us. Not only is he coming back, Mike, but he just posted a very cryptic workout video uh, throwing some slants to a, a, a retired wide receiver uh, named Julian Edelman. Yeah, if you're familiar with hmm. that guy and, and yes. some very cryptic language that maybe makes me think that this mother effer is going to bring Julian Edelman out of retirement and bring him back to Tampa with him. And uh, yes, Patriots fans are all collectively losing their brain at this site. Do you think that Tom Brady came out of retirement on his own? Or do you think Julian Edelman went to him and said, <laughs> hey, if you unretire, I will come to Tampa and play with you? I mean, holy crap. It, it, that's quite a sales pitch if Edelman yeah. delivered that successfully. <laughs> and, and shout out to Jules if, if, he, if he had any part of that. And yeah, maybe Gronk on a three-way as well, too. You say, uh, let, me bring, let me bring Gronky on the three-way here. Gronky, Gronky. I'm coming back. You're coming back. Tom's coming back. We're, we're all doing this, right? So, yes, that's not the most unrealistic thing in the world. Um, so there's a distinct possibility that we could see Julian Edelman catching passes from Tom Brady again, which is crazy. It, it it really would be crazy. I, I don't know if it'll happen or not, but we'll, I wouldn't be surprised if it, if it does. Um, let's, uh, let's change over to March Madness. Let's talk a little college basketball. Yes. A little bit of college hoops here. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but I am all in on our Mac champions, the St. Peter's Peacocks, because uh, I will hashtag strut up with them because uh, just mm. wow. Wow. Hashtag strut up is is a great team moniker hashtag. That's catchy. I love it. Yeah, shout out to the Mac champions from the same school as our alma mater, Quinnipiac Bobcats. That's why we're standing them right now, in case you can't tell. The 15 seed, Mike. This is one of those moments where, you know, I'm seeing my bracket be busted because I had Kentucky going far. But in the back of my mind, I'm saying to myself, you know what? If my bracket's going to get busted, it would be an honor 
for a team like St. Mary, uh, St. Peter's to bust it. Not only do they do that, they then advance to the Sweet 16, which is absolutely shocking for a 15 seed. And uh, they're, they're the darling of March Madness. It's official. Yeah, and and you know what I thought was interesting here is uh, is that the last time a team from New Jersey won a game in the mm. tournament, uh, mm. there see Seton Hall maybe is my guess. Seton Hall it was back in two thousand, early two thousands I think it was. Yeah, um, a player on that team is now coach is is now the head coach of St. Peter's. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Uh -huh. New, New Jersey sports full circle moment right there. There you go. Wow. Shout out there to the detox. Go. Yeah. That's they're definitely the, uh, the darling of March madness for sure. Uh, the, the guy you were trying to eliminate, we, you were, you were calling for the upset for the Duke blue devils against Cal state yeah, Fullerton. They hung it. on. They, they, they live to fight for weekend two after the win against Michigan state. Uh, where does the, uh, the final coach K magical fantasy ride go here next weekend? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think he's going all the way. What, what I would love to see in this now is to have two double digit seeds make the final four, because that's a very good possibility with three double digits in this in this sweet 16 now. Yeah. So Michigan's out there. That's definitely a possibility. Hmm. Yeah, I will definitely be pulling for that to happen. Let, let's root for the carnage. One, one, one piece of that carnage was Baylor out early, yeah. the first one seat out. Uh, you were texting me during that game. I was heading to my tea time as this was unfolding. And this was your typical March Madness game where you called it, you know, you say it's over. You say, wow, this is happening. And then everything flips on its head. And, and it, it turned out to be a classic. And it's also that's a typical of like, that's why Baylor was the number one seed, because they're able to hold, stay in there and make it into a game at the end and put it into overtime. They couldn't pull it out at the end of the day, but that's still why they were the number one seed is that they could make it go from nothing to something for them. Yeah. Impressive stuff from the Tar Heels. I mean, the overall review is I'm shocked. My bracket is still slightly intact. I don't know about you, but in my money bracket, I've got Villanova winning the whole thing. So that is my one team I am holding on to for dear life uh, for the rest of the tournament on my end. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't really know who I'm really going to say is going to win at all at this point. I actually I obviously didn't fill out a bracket at all through any of this. Uh, my Tennessee volunteers are out. They did. So yeah, they're out. Uh, Virginia Tech out. Two teams I wanted to to go a long way did not go a long way. So uh, you know, I I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to ride a St. Peter's bandwagon the whole way here. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Go Peacocks. Love it. Let's do it. Uh, the other bandwagon, the we're, we we are always on. We are always on this bandwagon because we are proud Quinnipiac Bobcats. And um, while we had a very disappointing Saturday evening with our Bobcats losing in overtime to Harvard in the ECAC championship game, we're still in the hockey tournament, the NCAA tournament. Yep, we're, we're in dancing. there as we're dancing as we expected. And I think we have a very good chance, probably one of the best chances to make the Frozen Four here. Uh, so we're, we're going all the way in that. It's uh, go Bobcats. Let's go all the way. Yeah, I mean, you just need a ticket. That, that's how the dance works. So uh, they're on the card. Uh, let's see what this weekend presents for them. I'll be definitely be tuning in for some college hockey this weekend. In the meantime, let's uh, hashtag always end with food. Yep, brought to you by our friends at Tosi Snacks, makers of the Tosi Bites, promo code COL20 at Tosi.com backslash COL, and our friends at Lynx Drinks, transfusion in a can. Uh, for me, it was a return trip, Mike. I highlighted this a few weeks ago, and me and the wife, we couldn't get enough. I don't know what drugs they put in the food, but we found our way back to the Cheesecake Factory, and we got our own individual slices as well. This could be on the brink of an addiction at this point. Uh, I mean, in terms of how far addictions go, this one is probably going to be expensive and very bad for your waistline. So how it is. It? Yeah, they, they get a stunning amount of money for one piece of cheesecake there. But oh, my God, it's so good. This time I went with the Reese's peanut butter double chocolate cheesecake, a mouthful indeed. And uh, my wife got the Hershey's chocolate uh, you really can't go wrong. I mean, I, I, we, we talked about this before. It's like there's sure. a million varieties of these cheesecakes. I think like 15 to 20 of them are actually just the same cheesecake, just with a different title on them. Uh, but regardless, the factory is still, still churning out some quality dessert. That's uh, good to hear. Good to hear. Uh, for me this past week, I, I decided to try to recreate a childhood throwback for me. Interesting. Um, something that uh, we, we talked briefly before we started recording. Uh, 
the the supermarket that like my parents shopped at when I was a kid was a Shaw's supermarket in the mm, Northeast. Good old like Shaw's, that. yeah. And uh, the bakery at Shaw's was was pretty good, I thought. Um, had some good stuff. And one of the things we would get a lot would be we'd get some of their muffins for breakfast. And my favorite muffin was the sweet tart muffin. This, of course, is a cranberry and orange muffin. Just a perfect combination of sweetness and tartness going on in these things. Yeah, that's and, um, one of those flavor combos. I I think at a younger age I stayed away from, but with mm. time and maturity, I realized the value of the cranberry orange combo in a dessert, in mm-hmm. a dessert or pastry for that matter. That's right. And uh, I tried to recreate these muffins this weekend. Yeah, um, I did not do a particularly good uh, job, mostly because I also couldn't I couldn't find fresh cranberries, so I tried to do them with dried cranberries with craisins in essence. And it just wasn't, it wasn't quite right. Um, but we may try it again sometime soon. We'll see if I can make the right sweet tart muffin. Yeah. You, pr- yeah, you may have to do a little searching for some fresh cranberries. I was just thinking in my head, I was like, Nope, I do not see those in my grocery store at all. <laughs> those are, those are not around. Not, it, a, it's not the time of year and B it's kind of hard to get stuff in general right now. So it you is. Know. yeah. Enjoy what you have on the shelves out there, but uh, cheers to the effort. You'll I know you'll be back at it for sure. I will indeed. Awesome. All right. That's a wrap on this week's Course of Life. Uh, enjoy uh, your week. I'm going to enjoy mine at the Match Play. Be sure to follow along for all that great content. And coming up next week, we are nearing the Masters trip. The hype is uh, fully engaged. Uh, get excited. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>